Ada for not calling my wife's daughter to invite her to Christmas. I, 63M, lost my wife, Beth, 60F at the time, three years ago. We had been together for 30 years. When I met my wife, she was already a widow. Her first husband had died in a car accident. She had a daughter, Jane, 43F, who was six at the time her father passed. We married when Jane was about 10 years old. When I came into Jane's life, I had no idea how to be a parent to her. I expressed my fears to Beth, and she said to just let her take the lead. I talked with Jane and told her that I knew I could never replace her dad and was not trying to. However, I would be willing to do all the dad stuff that her dad wasn't around to do if she wanted. I drove her to practices, attended every performance, stayed up late to help her study for math tests, taught her to drive and to shoot shared my love of fantasy literature and Star Trek. Our relationship was always hot and cold though. While she seemed happy, I was never dad, or stepdad, or even Uncle Sam. I was always just Sam. Beth and I had a son, Tom 32M, and a daughter, Christy 29F. Jane has a reasonable relationship with her half-siblings considering their age difference. A year or so after Christy was born, Jane became sullen and despondent. After talking with Beth, I offered to adopt Jane. Jane did not take this well, and I never brought it up again. I was the main disciplinarian parent in our household, and while none of the kids were troublemakers, they all did things that got them grounded or their privileges with our cars taken away. I think Jane resented this as well. When Jane graduated high school, each student was able to purchase two tickets to the ceremony. Jane purchased two tickets, and I thought I would be attending, but the week of the ceremony, Beth told me that Jane wanted to use her second seat to memorialize her father. I was hurt, but I understood. She put a picture of him on the empty chair next to her mom. I think it also hurt Beth as well. Jane was an excellent student, and she got some good scholarships, and I paid the remainder of her costs to go to college. I did get to see that graduation. When Jane got married, Beth and I were not able to pay for the entirety of her wedding. We paid about half. She had her father's younger brother walk her down the aisle. She would spend a week or two during the summer with her father's family. At the reception, my wife was again seated next to an empty chair to memorialize Jane's father. I was not given a seat with Beth at the family table, and honestly, I don't remember where I was supposed to be because I spent my time at the bar or standing behind Beth, who was having a very hard time. However, it was a lovely wedding, and once the dancing started, and everybody was out of their seats, I stopped worrying about where I was supposed to be. When Jane had her first kid, Beth and I were overjoyed. However, I soon learned that while my wife was going to be Gram Gram, I was not going to be Grandpa, but still just Sam. I am Sam to both her children. This was again something that hurt, and when Tom had his first child, he asked if I wanted to be Grandad or Sam to his kids, and I jumped at getting to be Grandpa. Jane ended up getting divorced about four years ago, shortly before Beth was diagnosed with cancer. She and her kids moved in with us, and we helped her with her lawyer until everything was finalized. During my wife's last year, Jane was with us all the time. It was a huge help to both Beth and I. After Beth passed, I was a wreck and mostly useless. It wasn't right, but Jane ended up doing most of the funeral preparation. I am very grateful for the help she provided. When Jane's father had died, his mother had helped with the funeral expenses and had purchased a double plot. When Jane prepared the funeral, she organized everything so that Beth would be buried next to Jane's father, her first husband. I was shocked and felt that this was done somewhat behind my back. My wife had never told me of this, but Jane assured me that this was what Beth would have wanted. I talked with Tom and Christy, and they know I intend to be cremated. Because of that, they thought that this was reasonable and the plot was already paid for. At the memorial service, Jane was rightfully upset. She told many of the other mourners that she was now orphaned and that she and her two kids had no close family left. This upset Tom and Christy a lot, but I tried to explain that it was different for Jane. I talked with Jane during the memorial and told her that she does have a family that will welcome her if she wants it. She thanked me and was polite. I have not really talked with Jane since the memorial. The first year, I invited Jane to all the family get-togethers just like before, even though Tom and Christy were angry with her. I left her voicemails asking how she was doing, how her kids are. However, the last couple of years I have stopped because I never get any response. 
I still send her and her kids gifts for their birthdays and Christmas. I just don't actively reach out. One of the last voicemails I left, I told her that all she needed to do was call and I would help her. With all that information, here is where I might be the AH. My daughter Christy is getting married next year. She reached out to Jane in the past few months and has been working on reconciling with her. Additionally, Jane's ex lives in a different state and her kids will be gone for most of the holidays. Jane has told Christy about how alone she is feeling. Christy called me and asked me to invite Jane to my house for Christmas. Christy and her fiance will be there along with Tom and his family. I told Christy that Jane knows she is always invited. Christy says that Jane won't come if I don't call and ask her to come. I told Christy that she could invite Jane or she could tell Jane to call me. Christy says I am being an AH for not calling Jane. I talked with my son, Tom, and he says he is tired of the rest of us having to beg Jane to be part of our family. I love Jane, she is my daughter, but after so much, I just feel like the only way this will work is if she takes the first steps. So, am I the AH for not calling my wife's daughter to invite her to Christmas? Jane, if you see this, just call. Edit. I am really astounded by all the comments. I thought I would just get a few, but there are too many to answer them all. I do feel the need to clear some things up though. I tried to be the best parent I could be to Jane with Beth's help. I never wanted her to feel like our family was not also her family or that her family had been replaced. I never felt like an ATM machine. I paid less than half of Jane's schooling because of her scholarships. I did what we could for her wedding. And yes, I was pissed about the seating and who got to walk her down the aisle. But Beth reminded me it was her day, not mine. I will be paying for a larger share of Christie's wedding than I did Jane's because my financial situation is different now. But Christy has asked for something I think her mom would have fought with her over already. But that is a story for another post. I don't think I did anything that would make Jane resent me besides marrying her mom. However, Jane has, except for a few occasions, always been polite and friendly to me. Maybe I shouldn't have put the wedding stuff in the post at all, but she did have a not father daughter dance with me at her wedding. When Beth passed, Jane told me that her mother was amazingly lucky to have found true love twice in one lifetime. When I offered to adopt Jane, it went very badly. Beth and I had sat her down and made the offer. We thought that after the birth of Christy, she was feeling left out. It backfired horribly. Jane said she didn't want my stupid thing name. I tried to explain that she wouldn't need to change her name, but she started screaming at me that she didn't want my stupid thing name, family, or anything else. Both Beth and I told her that this response was completely unacceptable, but she kept saying nasty things that teenagers say to both me and Beth. I told her that her behavior was totally unacceptable, and since her mom had lots of class and manners that this behavior must come from, her stupid F asterisk 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 in father's family. Beth told me that I wasn't helping and I left while she talked with Jane. A couple of days later, Jane asked to talk with Beth and I privately. She said wanted to move in with her uncle. I figured this was a hallow threat from a teenager since that uncle lived two states over and her life and friends were all where we lived. I said something like, well, if that's how you feel, you and your mom work it out and I will make it happen. I then left. Jane didn't move out. I did tell her that I was glad she chose to stay with us. Our relationship did get better, but never substantially improved after that point. So I am not a saint. I am human. I did my best. Update. Most people said it was time for Jane to face the consequences of her actions. Did Jane deserve to spend Christmas alone? Perhaps, but I didn't want my girl to be alone or sad when I could do something about it. So I called and once again got sent to voicemail. I left a message saying that I didn't know what her plans were, but that she should know that she is always welcome at our house. I figured that would be it. And I could tell Christy that I tried. On Saturday, I got a call from Jane. She seemed very down. She told me the same things I had heard from Christy. Her kids would be out of state with her ex for Christmas and New Year's. She was feeling very alone. I told her that she is always welcome to come celebrate with her brother and sister and myself. She said that sounded really good and she would like that. Jane, Christy, and her fiance, John because I am lazy, spent Christmas Eve with me. It was really nice. Jane was very sweet to everyone. People were so busy attacking Jane before and my post maybe was not fair to her. 
but Jane can be an incredibly caring person. Jane seemed a little on edge at first, but as the evening went on, she became more at ease. We watched A Muppet Christmas Cheryl, just like when my kids were younger. After my phone call with Jane, I had found Tom, Christy, and Jane's old stockings. There was not a lot of time, but I got some candy, a book, and a couple of gift cards for Jane, Christy, and John. On Christmas morning, all three were a bit surprised to find that they had stockings filled with goodies and called me a jerk for not telling them beforehand so that they could make sure I had one too. I said I was not involved and you can't call Santa a jerk or you get nothing just like me. Tom and his family came over on Christmas Day. Jane practically knows more about what is going on with Tom's kids than I do because she is very active on Facebook. Jane's gifts to everyone, well, everyone save John, were very thoughtful. Jane is great with kids, she is a teacher, and Tom's kids really enjoy their aunt, although they did ask where their cousins were, which made Jane a bit sad. Jane and Christy made our Christmas dinner, and seeing giggling like schoolgirls in the kitchen together reminded me Christmas long ago when Christy was seven or eight. Jane was home from college and Jane, Beth and Christy were all working in the kitchen. Christy was standing on a chair and Jane was teaching her all our secret family recipes. Christy adored Jane in the way that little kids adore adults who are not their parents. Jane was just so patient and kind to her little sister. I remember Beth, Jane and Christy telling Tom and I that stinky boys need to set the table. Seeing Jane and Christy together got me thinking about Beth and I had to go find a quiet spot to compose myself. Tom found me in my office. He said that Jane told him that I called her. He said that he was glad I did. That he was not sure he would have been willing or able to make the call. I told him, I bet if it was his kid he would have. That's probably enough of my family Christmas. I know that the real update is, did I talk with Jane? Tom and his family went home because his kids wanted to play with their new toys. Christy and John left to meet John's family for a late Christmas meal and get together. As Christy was leaving, she gave me a hug and told me, Merry Christmas, Daddy. When I turned around and saw Jane, I could see dread on her face. After everyone had left, Jane asked to talk with me. We had a long conversation, and I am going to hit the important parts. Jane said she was very thankful to be invited for Christmas. She told me that when she started dating after her divorce, because of her age, she met a lot of guys who had older kids like her own. Many didn't think trying to blend families with older kids was a good idea. I guess they figured the kids would be out of the house soon, and they had co-parenting relationships that worked for them. However, Jane has her kids pretty much all the time. A large factor in her divorce had been that her husband had a view that his job was more important than their kids' lives. She wanted to be with somebody who would show her kids, especially her son, that family is not just a thing women care about. Apparently, as her longest relationship was spiraling, she had an argument with her boyfriend where she said something like, and remember I am paraphrasing a story she told me. What's so hard about stepping up and being a good dad? My stepdad was able to do it and he didn't have any kids of his own when he married my mom. To which said boyfriend said something like, you mean the guy you treat like S asterisk 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 and your kids treat him badly too? She says that after that fight or relationship or whatever, she kind of started thinking about our relationship, things I had done for her and that she had done as well. She told me she feels embarrassed and ashamed, that she didn't know how to even start to fix anything, and she thought Tom and Christy and I were mad at her. Jane asked me if we could have a relationship like I have with Christy and Tom. I told her that I cannot give her a replica of my relationship with Christy, that none of us can change the past. I told her that for me, nothing has changed from when the afternoon at the park, where I told her that I would be willing to do all the things her dad was not around to do. I will always be as much her dad as she wants. Jane was crying by this point, and I held her. She started sobbing harder and saying she was sorry. I told her that I know and that everything is okay. In the middle of this, something happened that I have waited a very long time to hear. The sobs of, I'm sorry, became dad. I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry. Well, one apology and a good cry doesn't change a person. The next morning, I was mostly back to being Sam, but there were a few dads, and even one daddy sprinkled in. We will see. Some other things I am guessing people will want to know. We did talk about her mom's funeral. She said that she didn't mean to do anything secretive, 
By using the plot that was paid for, they saved on some costs, and were able to get an encasement as well. The encasement should make it possible to have my cremains interred with my wife. Also, I guess a down payment has been made towards a headstone for me that can be integrated with my wife's. Finally, her youngest was apparently upset that Tom's oldest called me grandpa all the time at the funeral, and thought that it meant I liked Tom's son more than him. That was years ago now, but she said she will be bringing it up the Grandpa Sam situation with her kids. I said I would like that. In all of this, Jane never tried to say that it was her father's brother, or any of the rest of her father's family, who didn't like me, or made her act like she did. There was no evil outside influence, just a scared girl who wishes she could have done some things differently. I know many people said that she wouldn't really change. I know change is very hard. Maybe after the holidays, everything will just go back to being like it was. However, even if that's what happens, I at least got one Christmas day when Jane wanted me to be her dad. Also, Jane knows I am posting this and said it was okay.